This is the 13th video in this tutorial series, and in the last video I left off saying that I'd look at increasing some conveniences in this model. And I've taken my rigging into pose mode, and if there's one thing that this, this rigging now has, it's an abundance of bones. And a lot of these bones, they're not going to do us much good in pose mode, because they're not used to actually pose the model anymore. And as you can see, I've made a selection of quite a few bones here. And these are all the bones that we won't use to pose the model. And I'm going to outline which bones. And I've made the selections just to save time because I don't want to select every single bone on video. So, in the hands, we really have one bone per finger that we're going to use to pose the model. And the rest of the bones they're kind of clutter and somewhat in the way. So I've selected the three fingers for the bones in the hand and the IK bone. And I've selected those bones on all of the fingers, the three joint bones and the IK, and left the controller bone unselected. The IK bone in the wrist, as well as the lower and upper arm bones will also not be used to pose the model. We'll use the controller bone and in some cases this bone in the back here, the plane controlling bone as well. In the eye there's the one bone is constrained to the other and we don't use this bone to control the eyes. We use the one bone and the other bone just follows along. So I've selected that bone. Again the upper lower arm bones, the IK bones in the wrist, the three bones plus IK bone in the hands leaving the controller bones unselected and in the legs the IK bone lower and upper leg will also not be used to pose the mo model. We'll be using the leg control bone. So basically as in a more basic statement, what I've selected is all of the bones we will not use to pose the model and left all of the bones that we're presently going to use to pose the model unselected. And now I can simply press the H key and hide those bones. Now when we're posing our model, um, when we want to select a control bone, we're not going to struggle with it like in the instance of the arm. We're not going to struggle to pick up the controller bone and rotate it and have to struggle to try to pick it around the upper and lower arm bones because they're hidden. And as well, it's also going to clean up things in the action in action editor, IPO editor, when we assign keyframes for an animation. So basically, it's a huge clutter cleanup and just makes things a lot easier to grab and a lot more convenient. Now for another convenience or two that I'm going to suggest, I'll go into edit mode. And one of the things that I'm not very fond of on this model is how many bones there are in the feet. And I don't really want to alter the rigging so that it doesn't have these bones and reparent things because that's a big hassle and I might want to use these bones by applying this rigging to another model. So what I'm going to do is select the first first bone in the middle toe and I'm going to shift D duplicate it and I'm going to have to undo that so I'll undo that because I forgot to deselect everything. And geez. Because of that mistake, I'm going to have to split my area and I'm going to look in the outliner to make sure that I don't have doubles of all my bones because that would be a bad, bad thing. So I'll go into the outliner. 
use the plus key to expand everything and just once over my rigging to make sure I don't have a whole bunch of doubles here. And that looks okay, so I can just join that back up. So, we'll start, try that again. First, deselect everything. And then select the middle bone. Uh, first bone in the middle toe. At Shift D to duplicate it. And I'm going to raise it along the Z axis and just pull it upwards out of the foot. And then go into pose mode. And what I'm going to do with these bones is I'm going to use it to create constraints across the feet. And I'm going to constrain that bone with the first bone in each toe. So I'll select that bone, select the bone that I want to follow its rotation, use Control alt c to add up the Add Constraint menu, and I'll use the Copy Rotation Constraint. <coughs> in the dialog for the constraint, I'll ch change the C space to local and local because we want these both to be local and I'm going to add this constraint to all of these bones and another point to look at is this again is a type of controlling bone and it won't need to deform the mesh so I'd best shut off the deform option while I'm thinking because I don't want to forget to turn off that deform option so I'm going to add this constraint in the exact same way, first select this bone, and then the bone I want to follow its rotation, use Control alt c choose the copy rotation constraint, and change the C-space to local for both sides. And I'm going to repeat that across the remaining eight bones, and I'll come back with that completed. With that constraint added to the first bone in all of the toes, I'm going to now box select the entire region and then I will use the shift key and deselect the ankle bones and the controller bone and with just the toes selected I'll press the H key and hide them and now this bone will control the toes of each foot. And in this instance, many people won't want to add this constraint, but I'm going to because I want to make my model as simple as I can. And I want to simplify it so that it suits my very limited skill level at animating. So I'm going to set constraints to the finger bones and I'll use control alt C again I'm going to use the copy rotation constraint and the copy scale constraint and in this dialog I'll also need to change the C space to local and local and there's two constraints here so I'll change them all to local and I'll add this constraint to the other two fingers. I'll exclude the thumb from this constraint. With that constraint added to the three fingers on each hand, I'll select those fingers. Using the shift key, so I select them all. And again, press H to hide those. Well, I'm out of time for this video, and in the next video, we'll take a look at some of the movement of our character here, and see if we can start working on a pose and perhaps an action. So, that'll be in the next video, and until then, happy modeling.